What we have here is a 2001 Jetta. And the customer brought it in with a laundry list of upgrades that he wants to do. Probably going to do this video on only one of the upgrades, but I'll show you what else he's got going on. Let's take a look. First of all, he's got his Summit Racing Equipment sticker, his blacked out wheels, his monstrous exhaust pipe. Put my hand in there for reference. That thing's a good four inches, maybe five inches across. He's got his VW Dope sticker, Method Race Wheels. There's no race wheels on this car. And look what we have here. Here's what he's after. He's got a gasket and a 658 fifth gear upgrade set. Some good gear lube. Purchased from one of the main TDI suppliers. And look at this. Ooh, shiny. Short throw shifter kit. And over here, we have a frost heater. Winter's almost over here. This is almost silly to put on right now, but here's my favorite part of these. These are for the installer, right? Not the owner. The installer gets to eat those. Hope I don't get in trouble for eating them, because I'm gonna. But we'll do this video on installing a 658 fifth gear set. And there lies the fifth gear cover. It's a little dirty and the power steering lines crossed it. Probably be best to move this fender liner here to make it easier to video. gets it out of our way for filming. And here's our fifth gear stuff. We'll be taking the uh, fork off here, this bolt out of there, that bolt out of there, and that bolt out of there. 
these bolts will need to come out of the center uh, this this comes off pretty hard sometimes pretty stiff uh, this comes off really stiff sometimes uh, uh, the puller will chip the teeth off of here so we'll keep going on it okay, these two bolts are triple spline or XZN focus in there This bolt here, it really helps to have um, the transmission in fifth gear as you remove it because it's a little bit, it's a little interference here uh, to get your socket in there. So I'm going to crawl up on the ladder and put the transmission in fifth gear. Hopefully you could see that move out as I put it in fifth gear. I did that under the hood by grabbing the golf club. This bolt is a Torx 45. Okay, out with the bolt and out with the shift fork. I want to check the tips for where my website shows a few of these pretty worn, caught worn enough to cause a huge problem. Uh, these are fine. See the tips there, there's no wear on them. Okay, these bolts in the middle are 60 Torx. This is a very large Torx. It's probably not going to be in most people's sets, so make sure you have a T60 if you try this, this your project. If you don't have a gun, you might have trouble getting these out because um, it'll rotate the shaft. If you rotate, probably just put it in gear and it'll be fine. These two are interchangeable. These two are interchangeable. A lot of times you have to apply heat to this area to get these gears off. So you want to remove this clip. Because this clip, if you expose it to heat, it'll ruin it. I have new ones of these in stock, but if you're doing this yourself, you certainly don't. And you need to take a good look at the dogs, uh, these three little keyway things that are right there. They'll only go in one way. Um, you need to make sure you put them in the right way. And it's best to understand how they fit so you don't have to think about it too much and figure out which way they go. Oh, almost dropped that. This goes right there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the slider off and these dogs are going to fly when I do that so don't lose them well they didn't fly this is a very bad angle for me to show you things but here are the dogs And as we go back together, I'll show you which way they come apart. This also, this is the fifth gear slider. It also needs to go back together the same way. The flat surface goes out, the inside goes in. You'd have to be really dumb to put that in the wrong way, but it would go in the wrong way.
Okay, how I usually get these off is I will air hammer inwards on the shaft and I will pry outwards on the gear. The gear pushes against the, the hub. This is the hub, fifth gear hub. And so pushing the gear outwards will push out on the hub. Um, sometimes that isn't enough force. Sometimes you have to heat this because these splines are really, really tight. And um, if we have to heat it, then I'll show a separate um, cut of that. I wanted to show you my little nasty. This is a, uh, I paid $19 for this over 20 years ago. It's not real super powerful, but it's been handy and I've used it for all kinds of things. I have another bigger one, but I just use this one all the time. And here's what I push against the shaft with. You don't want to stick that in the hole because there's threads in there. You'll jack it up. So I put a socket on here. I've used this same socket for almost every one I've ever done. It's a 15 millimeter Mac and it is destroyed from it. You couldn't use it again and I doubt Mac would warranty it because I've used it as a driver forever. Why would I want them to warranty it? Because I use it as a driver. And there's how I use it right there. Okay, I stick my ladyfoot pry bar in there. Give it a good pry. And hammer inwards. It is moving, but just barely. I think I'm totally blocking the shot here. Move my camera set up. And there we go, hub off. Brass ring behind it, locking ring is what I would call it. Some people call it a synchronizer. That's there's your synchronizer, baby. And fifth gear out from behind it with the bearing inside of it. And the next gear is always the harder one. These gears here do have a tendency to strip out. They're set of splines right here. Um, I've never specifically seen it myself, but I've seen it on the internet multiple times where it loses fifth gear, it just goes into neutral when you put it in fifth, and this, uh, these splines are stripped out right here. Sometimes the gear alone is damaged, sometimes the shaft is damaged. Shaft damage, you gotta pull the trans apart, major repair. If uh, just the gear is stripped, then you can fix the gear, replace the gear. Along the same lines as the other one, we put a lady foot pry bar behind it and we pry out and then we hammer inwards on the shaft. Very rarely do these come out without heat, so I'm going to give it a shot, but I'm not going to be disappointed if they don't come out. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my lucky day. I'm go buy a lottery ticket. This gear does only go on one way. Flat side goes outwards. Step side goes inwards. Okay. New 658 counter gear. Flat side out. This barely fits the splines, it's very, very tight on there. And I use a bushing driver like this. 
socket would probably work just as fine. Drive it down until it's flush. Super easy. And new 658 gear. Um, does not come with a bearing in this kit, which the bearing isn't a high wear item, so it can be reused just fine. Slide it on there. So as you assemble this, you want the flat face up on the slider. This one has a step on this side, and the hub has a flat face. You want that up. This is a step side on the hub. Inside the slider, there are three uh, cutouts for the dogs, and the dogs fit into those cutouts. So you want to uh, the dogs fit inside the narrow groove in the hub in here. So you do not want to put them in the fat group. Obviously you don't want to put it in there where there's too much slop. You want to put it in the uh, narrow groove. There's three of those. So you line the narrow grooves up in the hub with the notched splines on the slider. You put this portion down on all three of them. And the clip goes inside the slider. The slider's kind of U-shaped, and you put the clip inside the U-shape. So we put our dogs inside there, and just simply put the clip inside it. And then if we seat our slider into the dogs, we can turn it over nice and easy. Put the other clip in nice and easy. And I missed the U-shaped portion of the dog with the clip, so I just pry that in with the knife there. And then we have an assembled slider and hub assembly. Now I want to show you with this, um, this is a brass and the gear, the original one. The brass sits inside the fat notches of the hub. These little tabs here, those tabs fit inside the large notches in the hub. And so now we take our assembled hub and slider with the clips and dogs and our brass blocking ring. We put our brass blocking ring on our new fifth gear, fifth gear. and we put this on here. And we'll just give it a little press to get it started into the splines. Brass hammer would be good. I'm just trying to get it started on the splines. As you go down, this brass blocking ring will need to fit into the, the hub and slider. So you pull it outwards and rotate it. I don't know if you're getting any of that or not. You pull it out and rotate it until those tabs that I showed fit into the fat slots of the hub. And at that point you can go ahead and pull the gear out to match it, which is what I just did. And then you hold out on the gear while you drive in on that. Holding out on the gear holds the dogs and the brass blocking ring in place to where you don't knock it out of position. Okay, so the way I do this is I hold out on the gear and I have my partner drive it inwards. My finger is, is kind of behind the gear to hold the dogs and the slider in place. And uh, obviously you have to do this with some control because my fingers are kind of behind the gear and he'll drive the, uh, drop, pinch my fingers between the gear and the transmission. Go ahead and start driving it. Now every once in a while as he hits it, it will knock the gear backwards. If he knocks the gear backwards too far, 
you know, I can I can only hold so much force with my fingers. But as he knocks, if he knocks the gear backwards too far, then that creates space. With and the slide, I'm sorry, the brass blocking ring can fall out of position. So we have to make sure it stays seated to keep it in position, and then continue driving it onward. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Hang on. Okay. Okay. Um, you, for depth of driving it, you can wiggle the gear to see how much play there is. There should be almost none. Um, and also you can look at the, the step here between the shaft and the, the flat surface of the hub. The, um, it should be almost flush, not quite flush, but the main thing is the movement of the gear behind here. Go ahead and keep driving it. Okay, I've reached a point where it, there's, there's so little clearance here that I can take my fingers off. Uh, go ahead and just drive it down until it feels, feels solid. Okay, hang on. Yeah, there's very little clearance here. This is almost flush. Couple more wax just to make sure, give it a nice solid wax. Still solid? Yep. And your gear is seated. Okay, this kit did come with one new washer uh, that goes on the small gear. And you torque those to 59 foot-pounds. I don't think I showed these pieces as I disassembled, uh, but it's pretty obvious they sit inside the fork here, and you put the bolt through on the flat there. Okay, these fork bolts torque to 18 foot-pounds. Now you want to put on this bracket and this bolt that connect from the internal linkage of the transmission to the fifth fork. Okay, I put this bolt in and that's the internal linkage coming from inside the transmission and that's the fifth gear shift fork. So you put this bolt in. Uh, earlier I moved the transmission into fifth gear to make it easier to access this bolt here um, but I've since knocked it back into neutral and what you want to do is this is a, an adjustment here see that that part wiggles on the internal linkage from the trans so you want to get this to where this brass behind here you can't see it but if you 
looking through that hole right there, you can see the brass. And as I wiggle it with my finger, you want to make sure that moves nice and easy. That means this isn't bound up, it isn't loaded one way or another. And that's where you want to tighten the bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten that bolt off camera, and then we'll double check that our brass still moves. Okay, our bolt's now tight. We uh, look through our hole there, wiggle our brass, I'm moving, moving it, the brass behind there like that. And we can see that it moves, so that means our adjustment is okay. Okay, we've put the cover on, and I'm gonna put the fender liner on. I'm not gonna video any of that. And we're gonna drain the transmission fluid, put new fluid in it, and we might take a test drive in this and show the RPMs after in fifth gear at 60 mile an hour after uh, the ratio change. All right, I'm trying to maintain 60 mile an hour uh, in order to show the RPM difference at 60 to, uh, with the 658 gear. And you can see at 60 mile an hour here, I'm creeping above 60 though. Let me slow down a little bit. At 60 mile an hour, I'm less than two grand on the tack. I recently did a video of a fifth gear install with a 652 ratio on a Volkswagen TDI and I did not video the road speed versus the engine RPM to give an idea of how much RPM difference it made before I put the fifth gear set in there. So today I'm driving a comparable car. It is a TDI. It should have the same stock ratios as the other car. And I'm going to take it out on the highway and get it up to 60 mile an hour. Oh crap, there's dead traffic. Look at that, terrible traffic. Ain't no way I'm getting up to 60 mile an hour. Here is my speed and RPM at 60 mile an hour with a stock fifth gear ratio. And I'll try and block the sun there. Looks like 50 mile an hour or 60 mile an hour and 2,000 RPM.